running. You can see she's running. There's Monday, Memorial Day weekend on 2020 year. Figured I'd finally change these gauge faces out. Before I put these in, this is a manual car to begin with, factory manual. And I didn't realize this was an 8K RPM, which is actually for automatic only. So it does not read correctly. So I've always had to look over at my tachometer and shift light combo, which is this one. So I finally decided to change this over. I got another gauge set, gauge face set that we're gonna use and try. It'll allow me also to fix that this needle sticks until a certain point and so does the fuel gauge, which is a little bit annoying if you ask me because it'll stick thinking, oh, I still got fuel and then all of a sudden the fuel light comes on. It's like, ah, no, really? So I think I've done a video on this once before years ago, but I think I'm just going to do it again. And this time I'm going to show the removal of the cluster. So bear with me. I'm only one person and a camera phone because my other batteries for my other camera are pretty much dead at the moment. Oh, I just locked the steering wheel on myself. So, start, I'm gonna put you down for a moment. Okay, I've got an instrument cluster bezel here for two gauges. So what we're gonna do first is I'm going to remove these gauges. But again, I'm gonna have to either put you down. Try to do this one-handed if I can. This one should just slide out from a snug fit, okay? So that one is fuel pressure. That, to me, is an important one. And this one's got two-wire connect. One for power ground and ignition and light. Then the other one is for the sensor, which is in the engine bay. So we're just going to go ahead and move that one instead of the side. And we're gonna go for the air fuel ratio. This one's been, doesn't fit in here as well, but that's okay. Uh, I'll eventually fix that. And this one's got a one wire hookup on it. There's a controller that I've buried it somewhere in here that I can still get to to do a sensor relearn that requires every now and then. So there's that. Move our wiper switch down and we're just going to take these screws out here. I do not want to lose these, but I can always get more in the hardware store. It's not that critical. I'll go back over to the other one. We're just going to do the same thing. Move. Oh, my finger's in the way. Okay, I'm gonna drop the steering column. That should help me get some more access here. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep this short. Oh, I've been dreading doing this. It's like, no, this car is not going anywhere. I'm not gonna do anything to it. Especially since something else happened. You can see I've had to modify the original cluster trim. And I need a different screwdriver for that one, for that hotness. I had one in here somewhere. I thought I did somewhere. No, it doesn't look like it. All right. 
and we're going for another screwdriver. I'm going to have to borrow one from this other toolbox. Okay, should be a short one in here somewhere. Yeah, that'll do. some sort of power tool to do this quickly at work, but since I'm not at work, doing this by hand now and then isn't so bad. I'm just gonna put that down on the boot there so I don't lose it. Right, I'm switching hands here for a moment. I'm trying to get my fingers out of the camera, sorry. I'm using an iPhone 11. Just a base, I'm done. nothing like a Max or Pro Max, just the regular iPhone 11 for this. As you can pair the quality might be better than. All right, so these bottom clips, remember, just pop out, and then the cluster comes out that way. So bottom has two clips, and then there's just two screws in the top. So. Okay, of course you can see some of the wires I ran for the gauges up in here. If I can get it to focus real quick. So, yeah. All right, now there's four screws, one in this corner. There is one in that corner, one up there, and another one to the right of it. I'm gonna stop this buzzer for a little bit. Some people get real annoyed when they're working on cars and they hear that just constantly. Me, I don't have a problem with it. I've learned to tone things out many years ago when I used to camp. In the middle of nowhere, you learn to hear all these noises at night, and you just can't sleep. So you end up learning to do things like ignoring certain noises. There we go, me ranting again. Okay, so I'm trying not to lose these screws down in there. That would not be a fun day. I'll tell you now. That would not be a fun day. I'm gonna stick that over there. So I can put that screw there. This screw is gonna be a little bit fun to do. some sort of pocket screwdriver with a thought I did. That'd be helpful right about now. Just there, that one goes there. Big old wiring mess from the gauge face that I tucked up in there. with you, I don't know which one's which. This one goes that way, that one goes this way. Here's the mini controller for it. It's just been tucked up in there. I'm just gonna move that off to the side for now. And maybe I can get it with my bare hands. Ooh.
I got it. Woohoo. I got it. Oh, there goes that. Might as well clean up this plastic lens to the cluster too while I'm at it. I might as well. It, don't lose it. Okay, good. And don't lose this one. Okay. So. Okay, we need to. Alright, so this cluster now should just pull forward. The connector is connected to the chassis or this. Uh, it's actually called the dash support. So just pull it forward and it should disconnect from the connector already. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, shite. Maybe this will work. I don't know. All right, here we go. So just pull it forward, lean it back, and tip it up. From the bottom up. Okay, there we go. All right. As you can see, cluster's out. You can see where I've ran some of the connections. So we're just going to disconnect this here. If I can remember how these come apart. Okay, so we need to move these out of the way. And I know what connector is what in here already. Those two are for fuel gauge, that one's for the air fuel ratio. The air fuel ratio is a little bit wider than that one which is not a big issue for me so yeah all right i'm gonna set you guys down temporarily just so i can unhook the wiring here's that one that one That one. that one, okay. We are completely unhooked, and if you have any bulbs that are out, now's the time. These are all the bulb sockets here. All up in here, and that one is high beyond. Yeah, so left turn signal, right turn signal, high beam. If you're looking at this, laying out like this is. Um, cluster bulb, cluster bulb, backlight for the tack. Um, I think, what is that one? I don't remember what that one is right at the moment. So, and then these are some of the gauge bulbs. I think, yeah, that's a cluster bulb for the uh, speedometer. And then these are gauge, the warning lights down. And some of these over here. I don't remember what they are. Uh, okay, so now we just need to take this lens off and separate some things here. Uh, we're gonna do this in a different location where I feel more comfortable doing this. 
All right, so I've got this all set up on the ground here. No, this is not a sponsor. I'm just using this box. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just going to take this apart. So first thing we need to do is we need to take this lens off. So there's one, two, three, four on this side. It's a clear plastic. And then there's four on the bottom. That one, that one, that one, that one. So gently remove them. I'm going to set you down here or try to in a position you guys can watch. I'm trying to set this up. Not easy. Hopefully this doesn't slip on me. All right, so I'm just gonna use some small screwdriver flat blades here very gently and carefully. I'm just gonna push down and push forward or push towards me and it should just release. Plastic that's been heat cycled quite a lot is very brittle. You want to avoid breaking these tangs. There we go. This is just like plexiglass. It's like Lexan. That's what it is. We're going to set that off to the side now. And now we're just going to remove this plastic bezel piece. To do that, there's another four plastic tangs here on each side. There's five on the bottom. It looks like there's four on the top. So again, we're just gonna push them down in and towards me, myself. Bottom ones, we're just going to press down and out. And these ones are gonna be the tricky ones. So you got a little bit of pressure on them. So where am I gonna start? I think I'm gonna start with the, the center one here. Going to release, going to release. So that one's released. Going to release. So not a whole lot of pressure required. There is not a whole lot of pressure. These ones receive it themselves, so we're just gonna push down on them and it should release itself now. This should just lift up and out. There we go. So as you can see, there's the gauges. This one didn't seem like it wanted to seat very well. So that may be part of my problem here. So we're going to remove these gauges faces without taking the needle off. That's the way they were designed to be put on and that's the way they will come off. There is some double sided tape on here somewhere that uh, was put on. So we're just going to be fighting that a little bit. So. Going to let that start to come off. Going to bring the wire connection through the back side. I'm gonna get that one. I don't remember how I did that one. Ah, there it came. Okay. I'm gonna try to peel these up without destroying the peeling up the original faces which are still on here they're required to be on here for these gauges to work on come on so if i can we're going to take up double-sided tape too okay so we're just going to slowly like so 
we go. This double-sided tape should just come up without leaving any mess or marks. I'm gonna leave it like that. I think I peeled this up off of somewhere. I didn't really necessarily need to. Maybe I can just leave that in there like so and tear something off to help hold it. Okay. So, there we go. There's one. I'm going to take up... I'm tempted to leave some half of these in here and kind of alternate the pattern. But that's just me. Move up that way. Down. Okay, I forgot there is a screw in these ones, so now I'm going to retrieve speedometer. These faces still work. I know they do. They're on not just long ago. So there's that one. I'm gonna get a small screwdriver real quick. Very small screwdriver. these screws. I really do not wish to lose them at all. That one. That one. Try to remove this gauge face. Lift that up. This one just slides under. It's not like a full circle like these these ones are like that. This is just like a half circle. Okay, there's that one. This old double sided tape, which just comes off fairly easily. Okay. Okay, we're going to try to get this one over here. to do this without breaking the needle. That needle is very important, especially I don't think you can get these clusters anymore. Probably get it repaired maybe if you're lucky. So we're just going to like so. There it is. Just like so. Take. So this is what the gauge faces look like on stock. 
and these faces just slip over them. There are people out there that take these, they take the needles off, they take these gauge faces off, and then they put the other ones on. I mean, you can do that. The problem I see with that mainly is trying to get the gauge needles back on accurately where they originally were. That, to me, presents quite a bit of a problem. Unless you know exactly where it was before you took it off, you're kind of guessing really hard at that point. Now it looks like these terminals on here might new bases here might be the same maybe I yeah, they look the same do they plug in the same they kind of look like it They're the same. Maybe they might work with the controller I already have in there. Because they supply this controller. Blue or green. And Max. I really don't like this style. I like the one that I have in there. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll leave the one that's in there in there. And see if not then I'll come up with some sort of plan here but in the meantime let's go ahead and put these on so we're gonna start with the harder ones first in my mind fuel gauge sort Do they supply me with any thing uh, bend down that way. It'll move okay on its own. I can't sit on that but like I used to anymore. My legs start to go to sleep. Okay, that one. 
I may end up having to go get some double-sided tape. It's okay. I'm gonna feed. That through where I have the old one fed through if I can get it. How did I get this in here last time? That one puzzles me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait for it. You. Yeah, there you go. I've got it. I've got it, you see. Okay, first we're going to feed the needle through. Over. So. down so we can get this on here properly there we go now my gauge is going to be more accurate because the old one is 8k rpm which is automatic this is a stock manual this car came manual stock and it's still manual today just quite heavily modified i could say in my mind now, temporarily, I'm going to start these screws back in here. Just so I don't lose them. For now. Neighbors walking through the hood. Being noisy as hell. bit on some of these here just to hold them yep i really don't want to make a trip to the hardware store especially during uh what's currently going on in the world but i may not have a choice it's okay i'll just get in and get out hopefully i just need some double-sided tape Come on, feed. That's sideways. That's why. Feed through there. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Okay. So this one's the more trickier one. Why? Because of its location. Especially with the odometer button being in this area. Okay, come on. Come on. Oh, this is the other reason why. You don't want to double feed it. There we go. Pull some of that water up over. That one's just fine where it is. I don't need to bend those tabs on that. So from here, the install is in reverse order. So this piece will go on and then the lens 
and then you'll put it back in the car and we'll just hook those up. So for now I'm gonna go and get some double sided tape and I didn't realize I should have left the other stuff on there, but that's my mistake. Um, and of course I have this carbon fiber looking face template for this piece that I'll put on. I think that's just some double-sided tape. Put that on there and then we'll put this back in the car. So hang tight and we'll be right back thanks to editing. All right, we're back. I went and got some tape, did a few other things. So we're back at this. I just took our uh, plastic face off here real quick. Um, this is a carbon fiber like looking plastic vinyl thing. It's just got 3M double sided adhesive on the back of it, just laid over on it and gives you that carbon fiber look. A little chancy if it's not real carbon fiber, but whatever. This is not a show car. This is my own personal vehicle. So I've started putting some of this 3M double sided tape behind these gauges here to help hold them in place. It doesn't have to be very, doesn't have to be on there very much. Uh, let's see if we can't set this up again. Okay, so let's get back again. There we go. All right, so again, not a sponsor, not a sponsor. This is just stuff I'm using, I'm not, promoting anything so all I'm doing is I'm just lifting the gauge face here getting tape flat without any creases or anything and I'm just applying light pressure and putting it on so I see I didn't line this up very well Now we're just going to go for this top one. These big faces, I'm putting one in each corner of these two. I just put some here and here and making sure that the needles move freely. Otherwise, they will hang up. So now we're just going to put a little bit more. I've already done this tachometer side. I'm just showing this real quickly so you can see what I'm doing. And this tape is removable too. So if I ever want to revert back, it's not permanent tape, which is nice. It won't be permanent. Now the really tricky portion of this. Is this one we go just like that I did plug this in and it just shows white it's not the color that it, it should be, it should be blue, but I may leave it white, but I might go to blue, which means I would have to switch the controller that's in it, in the car already, which I'm not very fond of doing, but that's okay. That's all right, we'll just, we'll do something about it. I will at least another time, maybe. So we're just gonna put this top face back on since now the gauges are in place here and we're going to gently and firmly squeeze the two pieces together and there we go just like that now I'm going to make sure none of these bulbs in the back here fell out 
because I had one fall out on it just earlier, not too long ago. And when I put this back in, make sure I'm gonna make sure that all these bulbs were like the all the indicators work before I put the final instrument cluster uh, trim bezel on, which is what we removed first before we removed the cluster. And here's the glass. It's a little bit dirty. Let's fix that. And yes, those two screws I removed, I did put them back in, and yes, they are tight. I made sure of that. I need to grab a towel real quick. Hold on. Okay. So I've got some of this plastic cleaner, They're not a sponsor. So, and the cap fell off as it dropped. So we're just going to, it says to shake well. Spray, polish, until dry with a soft lint free towel. Here we go. So I'm just going to give it some. This should help with clarity. grubby hand on it. We should do the back side too. Just because I have it out, I touched the back of it. I'll we'll have to go back and start trying to clean it. It's like, why won't it come out when it's the back side? So I'm just going to remove any of my finger and shit all on the back. Okay. Now we'll just uh, put this on. Got to make sure you line up the odometer trip reset button, push button here, with the hole. And first, make sure we line up all the tabs with the correct slots before we just give it a good even push here. It should all just clip in like so. Okay. And now I'm just going to give it a final wipe. While well, I still can.
go. Yeah, I know this cover is not perfect. I know it. But that's okay. I'll just have to do what I'm doing. Okay. That. Now we're going to move on to wiring. Yay, my favorite. So, I think what I'm going to do for comparison here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook up one or two of these and show you the difference between when it's in the car, which I don't mind, but I was hoping a little bit more different color than just plain white. So, okay. this heat drink. Okay, so we're just going to try to cut back this heat shrink a little bit. So, just wide enough what I'm doing. down here at the bottom and here comes some noisy motorcycles there we go fairly small okay Trying to set this up here. So I'm just going to leave it here. We're going to leave this in the blue position, not the green. We're going to leave it in blue. It just needs a power and ground, fused power preferably, mainly. So I'm going to set you down for a moment so I can hook up our test here which is not cooperating ok 
Okay, there's one. Can I touch ground with something? being pain in my butt. Bear with me. Trying to do this and film is not... Trying to do this and film at the same time is a little tricky. So I just lit up that side only. You can adjust its intensity. Actually, you come to think of it, looking at that, and there's the green portion. So that's the bluish. Switch over, it's more green ish or dark, darker. I think what's in the car already will suffice. Now that I've hooked this up and compared this controller to the one that's already in the vehicle, these plugs that are on these new gauge faces are actually identical to the old one. So we're just going to unplug that and then we're going to move into the vehicle. here now oh, I see what fell okay I heard something fall in the garage I'm like what the I know what it is oh what am I thinking I don't know what I'm thinking here so just trying to plug these in for now, just to test it fully. Okay, so the longer one's going to go to that one, and the shorter one is going to the one at the end. So you can see the blue is pretty much the same as what the other controller is. I like this controller better because the pad is more like a pressure pad instead of just knob and switch. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So basically the blue green is the contrast, which is that button and then the brightness intensity, which would have been a knob. So I like this one better because it's just here. It's not like really bulky, it's really slimmed down. Really slimmed down version, which I think is much nicer because it's not bulky, it's not hanging down anywhere down here. It's just, that's it, it's there, it's on, it's on a fused circuit. So now we're just going to stuff this back in here and finish finish with it all right let's okay more over all right so we've already got all this plugged in i want to hang those off to the side over there again we're just so we got to put the top in first like so. Okay, what's what's holding me up? Oh, 
that's that's what's holding me up. So we're just gonna slide that in there. Tilt it. Oh, get this in. Move this bottom. There we go. Can't really necessarily see it on it. If I'm in your way, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this in here without doing anything wrong. I'm trying to do it. Okay, what's what's my hold up? Oh, uh, that would be my hold up right there. is preventing me from ah there it went okay just gently push so okay lights are on now I'm gonna put the key in I'm not gonna start it because well I did an oopsie with the engine the wipers. Hold on. I gotta fix this. Oh. I did not mean to press the wiper. Yep, one of the bulbs isn't working. So brake does work, cruise does work. Service, brake, check engine. Yeah, there's some bulbs that are not working. All right, well, I'm gonna mess with them and then we'll bring you back, but pretty much the rest of this is just, uh, put this in, put the screws back, the four screws back in, tuck all this away up in here and securely mount it, and then put those trim pieces back on the gauges back in that's pretty much the rest of it um i think i'll just do that off camera um i hope you enjoyed and this is what it's like to do instrument cluster on a 2g talon so I'll catch you next time